Hi, my name is India McWhorter and I am a clinical mental health counseling trainee at the App State Counseling Center. First, I just want to say thank you for your interest in our workshop series this semester. And as you can see on your screen, today's workshop is going to center on creative writing for mental health. And the workshop is called Writing to the Bottom of Things, a ritual for mind, body, and soul. Uh, this workshop is not my original idea. It's actually created by a former App State professor, Kara Hagen, and she graciously allowed me to share this workshop with all of you today. So just a few quick notes before we get started. Um, this presentation and any other presentation that's offered by the Counseling Center are not intended to replace mental health treatment. These workshops are psychoeducational or informational in nature. Uh, today's workshop will be a little bit experiential, um, but these things are not intended to replace mental health treatment. So if you are interested in receiving counseling services, um, our website and our phone number are listed here on the screen. And we just encourage you to get in touch to learn more about the services that we do offer to our students. Uh, if at any point during, during or after this workshop, uh, you're experiencing any distressing emotions or you're experiencing a mental health emergency, again, we ask that you call the Counseling Center to get in touch with uh, the emergency services that we do offer or we also encourage you to contact your local emergency responders if you're not here in town. Um, and just keep in mind that the resources available to you are going to vary based on your location, if you're in a different part of the state or if you're out of state. Um, and lastly, uh, a piece about confidentiality. This is less of a concern for this particular version of the workshop, as this is a recording and not a live workshop. But something to keep in mind for future workshops that you might attend is that these things are offered campus wide. And so there's no way to guarantee confidentiality regarding the things that are shared during the workshop. Um, so it's just important to be mindful of how you show up in the space and only share as you feel comfortable and safe to do so. So uh, when people hear the term creative writing, lots of things can come to mind. Uh, typically at the top of that list is essays, poems, songwriting. Uh, all of those things are absolutely forms of creative writing, as are all of the other things that you see listed here. Uh, today's workshop is going to focus on journaling, and specifically we're going to explore the ways that structured and non-structured journaling can affect your mental health. Speaking of which, some of the mental health benefits that you can experience um, are listed here on the screen. So starting with emotion regulation and communication skills. Uh, both of these sets of skills can be improved with continued use of creative writing, especially journaling. Um, having a way to notice a pattern in your emotions, notice a pattern in your communication styles, and use that information the next time an emotion comes up or the next time a topic comes up that you want to communicate can be very helpful. Um, and improving your communication skills doesn't necessarily mean in terms of your grammar or your writing style. Um, but in the sense that you can have a moment to practice what it is that you want to say or have a moment to sort through the emotions that are surrounding what it is that you want to say so that you can communicate it more effectively. Uh, the next few bullet points are the main focus of today's workshop, um, increasing mindfulness skills, increasing and furthering your insight, and also increasing our awareness for the current insights that already exist within us. And finding ways to shift some of the narratives and thought patterns that we go through our days with. Um, so often we go through every day with so many negative thoughts or so many thought loops that we get stuck in. And so again, the continued use of journaling can give us a way to shift some of those thought loops and those narratives and replace them with more empowering ones. And so that is what we hope to do today. Um, before we get started, Before we get started with any writing exercises, what I would like for us to do is to start with a breathing exercise um, to give us a way to land in this space, take a moment to put away the to-do list, not worry about what's coming next um, or what's already happened today, but just give us a moment to drop into the space. So we'll just take a moment to 
get comfortable in your seat, in your chair, in your bed, on the floor, wherever you find yourself right now. Uh, just take a few good deep breaths and land in this space. If it feels comfortable, you can close your eyes. And we'll just take a few deep breaths together and land here in this space. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna raise your chest to the sky, lift your sternum and your neck to the sky. Really trying to grow out of your seat. And we'll hang out here for about three to five breaths. On your next exhale, you're going to round your upper spine. Yes, I want you to slouch. And you're going to curve your upper spine. Dropping your knees to the floor. And you should feel the skin on the back of your body expanding and contracting. And we'll hang out here for three to five breaths. On your next inhale, you'll return to neutral spine. And as you exhale, you'll open one side of the body, pick a side, any side. And you'll feel your side body stretch. You want to let the weight of your head fall over and really try to relax into this side of the body. If it feels right, you can take one arm over to the side. If not, Fine to do whatever feels right for your body. And again, we'll hang out here for three to five breaths. And on your next inhale, you're going to return to neutral spine and exhale to the other side. Same thing over here, three to five breaths. And on your next exhale, you'll come back to neutral spine. Take a deep inhale. We'll exhale, let the chin float upwards. Let the hands follow. And again, you really want to try to climb out of your seat and feel your torso expand and contract. Three to five breaths. And whenever you're ready, let everything float back down to the neutral spine. Let your breathing return to normal and open your eyes. We're ready to write. So our first writing exercise is an easy one. It's called a word dump. 
So for one minute, all you're going to do is write as many words as you can as fast as you can. Don't worry about trying to construct any sentences. Um, nothing needs to make sense. All we're trying to do is take all of the jumble that might be going on in your brain right now and give it a place to go so that we can clear some space to do the deeper writing that we wish to do. So I'll keep time. You just need to focus on writing. So for one minute, you're going to write as many words as you can, as fast as you can. And your one minute starts now. All right, if you'll gently bring the writing to a close. Now that we've gotten some of the, the clutter and the brain fog that might be going on out of the way, uh, we're going to move on to our second writing exercise, which is called the places between. Uh, so now that we've kind of built up some speed and gotten some of the clutter out of the way, this exercise is going to help us slow down so that we can pay attention to the insights and wisdom that exists in the silent spaces, the places between our words, our thoughts, our narratives. Um, so this is also a very simple exercise. We're gonna begin with a specific word as a prompt and the word for this exercise is emotions. So for 30 seconds, um, you're gonna focus on your breath you're going to sit in silence and have a 30 second meditation. You'll hear the timer go off at the end of that 30 seconds, and you'll just write one word that relates to the prompt word of emotions. So again, 30 seconds in silence, focusing on your breath, and at the end of that 30 seconds, you'll write one word. We'll do this a few times. Um, and again, you don't have to worry about keeping track of time. I'll take care of that. And you'll hear the timer go off every 30 seconds. Whenever you hear the timer go off, you'll write one word that relates to emotions. And we'll do this a few times. All right. So don't worry about anything making sense in this writing either. It's free association. Uh, and you might be surprised about what shows up on the page. So your first 30 seconds starts now. All right, one word. And another 30 seconds starts now. One word. 
and we know it's 30 seconds or it's no. Another word on uh, emotions. And another 30 seconds starting now. One word. And 30 more seconds. One word and 30 seconds. The next 30 seconds starts now. Another 30 seconds starting now. And the final 30 seconds for this exercise starts now. Okay, so before we move on to the next exercise, just take a second to look at the words you've written down and just notice 
if anything surprises you. Notice that there seems to be a pattern to the words that you wrote down. And if not, that's okay. Just notice if anything comes up for you when you look at the words you've written down. And we'll move on to our next exercise, which is called question chemistry. So often we tell ourselves stories about ourselves, about the world around us, and we tend to get stuck in these loops and ruts, like I was talking about earlier. Maybe these ruts are overly worried or they're overly negative. Um, it could be any number of things. But often we get stuck in these loops and in these ruts, and they don't give us any space to explore a different version of our story or a completely new story altogether. And so this exercise is a practice of physically rearranging our questions, our statements, our thought patterns to create a new scenario, a new story, and eliminate a new way of thinking. So this exercise is also a simple one. You are going to complete the statement, I keep telling myself that blank. So you can fill in the blank with any scenario, any problem, uh, any worry that you have, something that you find yourself reflecting on often. I keep telling myself that blank. So at the top of a clean sheet of paper, or if you're working on your computer at the top of a new page, you are going to write out that entire statement. I keep telling myself that blank and you can fill in the blank with whatever you feel like you want to explore today. This is a great moment to pause the video if you feel like you need a little more time to think through that statement. And once you have that statement written all the way out, if you're working, with paper and pen or pencil, what you're going to do is write each individual word of your completed statement on an individual sheet of paper. So each word of the sentence will be on its own slip of paper. If you're working from a laptop, obviously you won't be able to see that, um, but I'll get to how the exercise is going to work in just a moment. So if you're working on paper um, with pen or pencil, you want to write each individual word on its own slip of paper. Once you have that done, how we're going to complete this exercise is rearrange those sheets of paper in as many rearrangements as you can think of, and you want to keep track of each rearrangement. So every time you rearrange a word, you want to write down um, you want to write down the new combination of words. It could be two words put together. It could be a full sentence put together. Uh, the goal here is to just come up with as many rearrangements and new combinations of that original statement as you can. So if you're doing this again on paper by hand, you can rearrange everything and then just write down each rearrangement that you come up with. If you're doing this on a computer screen, you can just keep track underneath the, the full statement that you've written on the top of your new page. Um, the goal here is to come up with as many rearrangements as you can. It doesn't have to make sense. Uh, you just want to rearrange and explore as many possibilities as you can. So we will leave about five minutes total for this exercise. Again, you don't need to worry about keeping track of time. I'll take care of that part for you. So again, the statement is, I keep telling myself that blank. And so your five minutes for the rearranging starts now.
We've got about one minute left. All right, if you'll gently bring your writing and rearranging to a close. And again, if you'll just take a second to look over all of the statements, questions, lines that you've rearranged your original statement into. And just notice what has shifted, if anything. Maybe the original statement has turned into a question. Maybe a question has been answered. Just notice what kinds of things have shifted over the course of the last five minutes. All right, and we have one last exercise. This last exercise is called Three Leagues Deep. Three Leagues Deep is a writing exercise that can be altered to basically any time frame, but ideally it takes just under 20 minutes to complete. Uh, you can do this exercise alone or in a group of people. Um, and the purpose of this exercise is to explore and mine the questions and conundrums that we go through our lives with for answers that may not be readily apparent on the surface. Um, this exercise invites all of the participants to look deeply at a problem or circumstance in an efficient way and also create an opportunity for discussion or introspection. And since we aren't discussing this live, um, introspection would be more the goal here. So again, this one can be completed on a computer or a different device or by hand but it is preferable to do this one by hand. So if you have a moment, if you could grab a pen or pencil and a piece of paper, if you're comfortable doing this one by hand, um, writing things by hand does engage more, more parts of your brain than just typing would. So it might be a more visceral experience for you if you do it by hand, but you're welcome to do whichever one is more comfortable for you. So, on a new sheet of paper, um, something that's completely separate from the last writing exercise, you're gonna write at the top of the page, the question, if you gave yourself permission not to have all of the answers, how would your life be different? You're gonna write that question at the top of a clean sheet of paper. If you gave yourself permission not to have all of the answers, how would your life be different? So once you have that completed, you're gonna free write about that question for five minutes. This is the first lead of the three leads deep. So the first lead, you're going to write about that question for a total of five minutes. Again, I'll keep the time. And you focus on free writing about the question. If you gave yourself permission not to have all of the answers, how would your life be different? And your five minutes starts now.
word if you'll gently bring the writing to a close. And once you've done that, it will take a minute to just scan over everything that you've written and find one word or phrase that stands out to you. Again, you want it to be one word or one phrase, not multiple phrases or sentences, just one word or phrase that stands out to you the most. And once you have it, you'll circle or underline it. And then on a new section of the page, you'll write down that one word or phrase that you chose from the previous writing. So whatever word or phrase you circled, write that down on a new section of the page. And then for two and a half minutes, we're gonna do another free write about that one word or phrase. So to be clear, it's not a continuation of your previous writing, but a new set of writing about the phrase or word that you circled. All right. So for two and a half minutes, you're gonna free write about that word or phrase and resist the urge to try and make things make sense. Just let your thoughts flow and see what comes up. And your time starts. And again, gently bring the writing to a close. And again, I'll ask you to scan through your writing 
to find one word or phrase that stands out to you. And same thing from your most recent writing. Circle or underline that one word or phrase. And then on a new section of the same page or on a new page altogether, write down that one word or phrase. And for the third lead, you will write about that new one word or phrase for one minute. So again, not a continuation of the previous writing, but a completely new writing about the one word or phrase that you had just chosen. And your one minute starts now. All right. You need to feel gently bring the writing to a close. Take just a moment to scan your one minute writing and find one word or phrase that stands out to you. And then on a, a page, a sheet, completely different journal, somewhere that's separate from all of your previous writings. If you'll write down the one word or phrase from the one minute writing that stands out to you. And then use that as a starting point for a discussion you would want to have with someone for further introspection. If you feel like journaling a little bit more after this workshop, um, know that you can use that one word or phrase as a starting point for your next direction or venture with your creative writing. Again, my name is Indian Reporter, and I am a counseling trainee at the App State Counseling Center. Um, I thank you for your time today, and I hope that you have found this workshop helpful.